Today, <clears throat> we're going to look at treatment dose and how you can utilize the acupuncture to improve your overall treatment. Key factors that we may well need to think about prior to actually taking treat, uh, applying treatment. So learning outcome for today is by the end of the session, you should be able to demonstrate an understanding of the factors which might contribute to acupuncture dose, an understanding of how point selection may influence treatment response, an awareness of factors other than the needle which may influence a person's response to actual acupuncture itself. What constitutes an adequate treatment dose? So at this point I'd just like you to just think as to what key factors may well contribute to a treatment dose within acupuncture itself. Main thing is going to be choice of points, method of needle stimulation, also the frequency and number of treatment sessions. Again, how close you may well keep some of these treatment sessions can also have a big impact. Number of needles and also treatment time. So I have seen where colleagues have used quite a large number of needles. So that doesn't necessarily mean that the treatment's going to actually be that much better, but we'll take a closer look at that. And also other key factors such as the time. And particularly when you look at some studies where they've actually been undertaken and have actually applied the acupuncture and it's designed to fit a certain time, particularly within the medical profession. Doctors can only work within a 10 minute, particularly in the UK. So therefore, they're doing treatment sessions, which may well only be 10 minutes long, but we'll take a close look at that as we go through as well. So these are key things that may well need to be considered. And this will also going to affect is how effective your treatment actually going to be. So if we look at the treatment time and frequency of, uh, of sessions, Generally, RCTs, uh, the longer the treatment session, the better the outcome. Again, if I look at uh, systematic route that I undertook, I found that the longer the treatment, the better the treatment uh, outcome, and also the frequency of the sessions. If it was a single session, was less effective than multiple sessions. So that's one key thing to, to bear in mind, particularly if you're looking at any studies that's uh, demonstrating that. Look at the methodology as to what's actually being done. Don't just look at the results, look at the methodology. So have they done several treatment sessions? If so, how many? How long were the needles left in place for? So those key things is gonna affect the overall outcome. So if we look at needle retention time, so as I was saying beforehand, I do look at key studies and some of them's only using 15, 20 minute treatment sessions and depending on the condition in which they're treating, that may well not um, be long enough in order to achieve what they set out to achieve. So if you look at uh, studies by Napado, for example, they've demonstrated that needles need to be in for at least 30 minutes. Mainly what they're showing is that once the needle's actually in place, it's not until a 20 minute time period where you see some bold activity taking place within the brain, demonstrating that that is the point when acupuncture is starting to take its effect. So therefore, if your treatment time is shorter than that, then you may well not be getting the full benefit of the acupuncture. Not always easy to achieve that, purely because if you work in the NHS, particularly here in the UK, you may well only have a 15 to 20 minutes time slot in order to treat the patient. In order to achieve that, that time slot may well not be long enough, but you can do key things um, like I do in my case is I'll put little seeds onto the patient where they can go away and continue to stimulate that. And a number of studies have shown that to be that much more um, effective. Other area to, to look at is the delayed onset of acupuncture. So again, if you look at a number of studies that I've looked at where they've done treatment and assessed the effect of acupuncture immediately after, and you find they turn around and say acupuncture is not effective, purely because they haven't given acupuncture time to have its effect. So again, a delayed effect could take anything between a couple of hours to several days. If I look at one study which I've done on DOMS, DOMs normally peak at three days. And again, it takes time for DOMs to actually build up. To utilize acupuncture to reduce DOMs, and the studies that was looking at that, 
most of them will be looking at uh, within the first hour to 24 hours. However, the studies that looked at it over five days were showing that the effect of acupuncture was mainly within a 48 to 72 hours when you start to see the true effect of acupuncture. And that was based on the points in which they actually used at that particular time. So again, it is important to bear that in mind and depending on the condition you're treating, that is gonna vary. If you are actually treating pain, for example, needles need to be in place for at least 30 to 40 minutes. The effect um, of treating pain could take anything between an hour to 24 hours to come on. So there are key things to um, take into consideration is the delayed effect as to how long it actually takes to actually um, have its effect. Needling technique. So that's something else you need to bear in mind depending on what you're actually treating. So whether you're wanting to have an effect on a sympathetic or a parasympathetic nervous system. And again, if you're treating for pain, so again, if you're treating for pain, depending on which um, aspects of pain, whether you want a segmental effect or a central effect. So for example, if I'm wanting a central effect of pain, I do need to leave my needles in for 30 to 40 minutes, if not slightly longer. Needle manipulation would need to be gentle. That would be into the hands and feet, gentle stimulation at two hertz. So that could be two hertz from manual acupuncture or two hertz from electroacupuncture. That's gonna release encephalines and endorphins into the system and into the blood um, circulation system. And I'll have a both a central and a segmental effect from that stimulation. However, if I'm wanting a segmental effect, then I would st stimulate slightly stronger. And in that respect, I'm going to use in the region of 100 hertz. So that's going to give me more of a segmental effect. It's going to uh, release dimorphines into the um, spinal cord and um, serotonin into that region and have more of a segmental effect on the actual body. So it's a stronger stimulation, primarily by electroacupuncture. So again, different types of needle stimulation in order to achieve your actual goal in itself. So do think about uh, um, the needle needling technique um, in order to achieve your acupuncture analgesia. So if we're looking at my fascial trigger points, again, I find that there's quite a lot of confusion when it comes to treating trigger points. And you will find some colleagues will advocate fanning. And I tend to use more of a gentle approach. Reason for that, is overall, if you look at the difference between sparrow pecking and fanning, so let me just explain, is fanning is where you're actually going to insert the needle, and in doing so, you're going to, it's more like taking an ice pick and stabbing at the actual trigger point itself. So you're gonna insert the needle right the way down to the trigger point and start stabbing into that area. Now, it is quite uncomfortable for the patient it does bring a lot of blood, a lot of circulation to the area, and it can be quite sore following treatment. However, sparrow picking is where you insert the needle. You may well just go down in the region of one to one and a half centimeters in depth. And all you're going to basically do is just lift the needle gently up and down. So you're not sliding it in and out the skin. It's just more or less gentle lifting up and down. It doesn't cause a patient any discomfort. However, overall studies have generally, once they've assessed the two and compared the two, have found no significant difference between the two treatments. So my answer to that is, why put your patient through discomfort and give them soreness if it's not going to prove that much more effective? Secondly, is by applying fanning, you're more likely to cause internal damage to the actual patient itself. So you've got depth of needling. The optimum therapeutic depth of needling is pretty much an ongoing debate between different colleagues with regards to how deep do you actually needle. So it can vary from individual to individual. Key thing is, is to think about what technique you're actually applying. So again, if you're treating into tight muscles, then yes, you may well needle down into the muscle, just leave the needle in order to allow that to release. So, and again, it depends on the size and weight of the individual. So therefore, 
more the intermuscle bulk then obviously can go a lot deeper you're not likely to cause any damage to any internal organs or anything like that classical acupuncture generally on average you need anything between 0.3 mils down to two centimeters depending on the size and weight of the individual however if you look at japanese style ac acupuncture you may be only going one to two mil or up to three or five mil in depth in most studies most studies is not aware of japanese style acupuncture and they'll use japanese style acupuncture as a sham now if you're treating neurological conditions whereas a person's quite sensitized or areas quite sensitized to something that is the style of kneeling you're actually going to use so therefore it's not sham acupuncture and there is a number of studies looking at neuro, um, neuropathy where you're actually finding your japanese style is being shown to be more effective than your traditional Chinese style. So again, think about what you're actually treating and that will determine as to how deep you actually need to go. So deep needling isn't necessary um, in order to get the optimum um, treatment outcome. Coming back to my fascial trigger point, there's a lot of colleagues out there that will advocate deep needling. But again, a number of studies have shown no significant difference between the two, your deep, superficial you can find just as many studies that will show you superficial it's just as effective and vice versa deep needling is just as effective so do bear in mind i needle i don't needle deeply when i'm treating my fascial trigger points and the outcome that i get from that is just as effective than other colleagues who's needling quite deep down to the area but however if you start continue to needle deeply it leaves you open to uh, needling into organs and causing damage to either lungs um, or internal organs and blood vessels and things like that. So they're key things to bear in mind. You have the number and frequency of sessions. Depending on what you're actually treating is going to determine as to how frequent. One of the main things that I tend to do is if I'm treating somebody and I don't get a response or the response that I desire, I'd normally bring my treatment sessions close together. So just purely by bringing the treatment sessions close together, instead of seeing them once a week, you might see them two or three times a week. And just that in itself can make a significant difference to the treatment outcome. Such as non-specific -spec low back pain. On average, NICE guidelines is recommending 10 to 12 sessions over 12 weeks. Osteoarthritic knees, again, at least six sessions in order to achieve your actual goals. If something's chronic, again, six or more sessions is re actually required for that. It's psychological. Now, that's showing you you need quite a few more sessions. As I was suggesting before, what I tend to do with patients to cut down the number of sessions is put seeds. I can send the patient away. In between treatment, they can stimulate those seeds and that can bring down the number of treatment sessions. So always give the patient something to do, and that will help to speed up the whole process, uh, particularly when you're working in private practice. So, you know, patients is always conscious of how many treatments is actually going to actually be required. And also, uh, in my case, I'm treating a lot of athletes who wants to be seen today, gone tomorrow. Um, so that's going to be a key thing is try and, um, speed up the frequency by giving patients something to do themselves as well. Now, I have seen colleagues where they can go out there and just blitz the patient because it uh, point treats the knee, they're going to actually utilise that knee. What I try to get across to colleagues is to more or less say, choose the most effective point for the condition in which you're actually treating. In doing so, you can significantly cut down on the number of needles that's actually required. For example, the eyes of the knees. That's only two points. Um, mainly, it's his stomach 35. And that's been demonstrated that those two points have been shown to be just as effective as using six points around the knees. So it's more or less showing you the choice of points, particularly when treating osteoarthritic knees. That is something to be aware of. Utilizing one needle generally isn't sufficient. In some cases, it may well resolve the problem, but in most cases, it's not generally sufficient. You normally need at least, on average, three needles. Um, it's where you're gonna to start to get your optimum results. But in some cases, 
you know, I've had treatment where it's been one needle before and it's been quite successful on myself. I've applied it to some patients and I've had pretty good success. So I'm not saying you can't use one needle. It depends on the circumstance as to what you're actually treating. But in most cases, I'd say you probably need more, but try and stay below, um, I'd say 10 needles um, at the most. But sometimes if you're treating both limbs, you may well need more in order to treat uh, both particular limbs in order to achieve your goal. But try not to overload the patient and overwhelm them with too many points. This is just demonstrating a number of studies, uh, two studies in particular, where they've used three, five and 11 needles. And what they found between the group that there was no significant difference between using three, 11 or five needles to achieve the treatment outcome. As I said, what's more important is the choice of points in which you actually use. That's pretty much where your focus needs to be. Think about the points. If you, the better you understand the function of a point, the easier it is to get the best treatment outcome. So in other words, if I'm going to strengthen a patient and I look at the study in which I did, the systematic which I did uh, review that I undertook, mainly looking at enhancing strength, now, all the studies that didn't use stomach 36 didn't perform as well as the studies that use stomach 36. So therefore, to strengthen, that is a point of choice. It's one of your most effective point to strengthen the body. So therefore, if I'm going to strengthen something, that is the main point I'm going to utilize. If not, the only point I really need to utilize. So different patient is going to respond differently. So again, to a certain extent, it's trying to spot that patient as they come through the door. And particularly, last thing you want is patients fainting on you or passing out or having a really strong reaction that you didn't really expect. You know, so you can have some patient that may will start vomiting, um, start crying. It just it releases quite an emotional response and particularly in some cases, quite a strong response. So it's being aware of those patients. So when I did my training, I was uh, the person who wrote the particular article on this and put it into the uh, Journal of Acupuncture Association of Charter Physiotherapy Olympias. Excellent tutor, very nice lady. Um, however, um, the paper that she'd done it would be mainly aimed at Caucasian population. So, but however, I say it is worth having a look, reading the paper. What you've got to bear in mind is your general population, particularly in the UK now, is quite um, multiracial. Um, so, you know, you've got Asians, Afro-Caribbeans, Jamaican, um, Africans. So, again, you've got a good mix of individuals. So you can't um, go by a Caucasian-looking individual who's going to come in with blue eyes, blonde-haired, red hair, fair-skinned, um, and respond to the sun those individual is going to respond quite strongly to acupuncture. Any of you who know somebody such as myself, I've got dark skin. So you can't apply the dark skin to somebody such as me, but however, I respond quite strongly to acupuncture. And purely that is because I'd work on more the sensitivity. So my skin, I do have sensitive skin. And that's one of the reason why I respond quite strong. So similar to someone with blonde hair, blue eyes or red hair, I have a sensitive skin as well. And believe it or not, even though I'm dark skinned, I still get burnt if I stay in the sun for too long. So they're key things to think about. So look at somebody who's, who, who reacts to um, the sun or the quite sensitive. Likely they may well have asthma, uh, they may well have psoriasis, eczema. Those individuals will have a strong reaction. So I hope that um, I've given you sufficient information to go away, put into um, your practice and hopefully uh, give you something to think about prior to doing any of your treatment as to how you can actually improve your overall treatment outcome. If you've got any questions at all, by all means, you can get in touch. You can get me on www.stevebaileyacupuncture.com Dot com go to my website there are other webinars that would actually be available on there but alternatively you can email me on info at steve bailey acupuncture.com and i'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may well have thank you for listening